This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to simplify trigonometric expressions. Uh, we're going to walk through uh, three problems and I'm going to explain how they all work. Okay, so uh, let's start with a problem. So uh, all these problems begin with some type of trigonometric expression and uh, I'm going to start off with a relatively easy one and then I'm going to ramp up the difficulty and get to one, you know, problems that are a little bit more difficult. Okay, so usually what ha happens is on a test quiz assignment in a trigonometry class, you're given this expression and uh, your job is to clean it up to make it as simple, as condensed as possible. Uh, all right, so this is a fairly complicated looking expression for our first problem. And uh, what I'd like to do is be able to, like I said, uh, kind of shrink it. All right, well, it turns out that the first problem uh, here has a numerator that we can simplify. Uh, this is related to the first Pythagorean identity. It turns out that that is equal to cosine squared of x. Okay, uh, all right, so that's uh, one step uh, in, our, in our simplification process. You can see that we went from a very complicated looking expression down to a less complicated expression. And I like to do the same thing with the denominator. All right, now to uh, address the denominator, it turns out that this part right here, this section right there, I can replace that and I'm going to replace that with 1 plus cotangent squared. All right, so again, that comes right from your Pythagorean uh, identities. So that's 1 plus cotangent squared x, and I still have this minus 1 there. Okay, you're thinking, why did he do that, right? Why is he throwing that in there? Because I could tell that after I threw it in there, the 1 plus cotangent squared x, that these 1s are going to cancel. I get 1 minus 1, and the 1 minus 1 cancels. So in the numerator, I still have the cosine squared of x. But in the denominator, I now have a single trigonometric function, cotangent squared x. All right, so far so good. Now, one of the strategies you're supposed to use with these problems is not only to simplify. Uh, if you get stuck, like right now, it looks like I'm kind of stuck. I'm thinking, well, what do I do next? Well, uh, what you should do is replace everything in terms of sines and cosines. So the numerator, well, it's already a cosine. So what I'd like to do is be able to change this denominator. Well, I know cotangent is equal to cosine over sine, but since it's squared, it's going to be cosine squared over sine squared. Okay, so I've got this cosine in the numerator, cosine squared that is in the numerator, and I'm dividing it by this expression cosine squared over sine squared x. So it turns out that uh, this is a giant division problem, right? I got cosine squared of x is being divided by cosine squared x all over sine squared x, right? It's a giant division problem. This is the division sign right here, the, the large fraction bar. All right, well, uh, you know, from grammar school, we should know how to change a division problem into a multiplication problem, right? So we change it to multiplication, we flip the second fraction. Sine squared x over cosine squared x. Again, this is cosine squared x. All right, so after we flip, you then will notice, oh, I forgot to put that 1 here in the denominator, but uh, you should notice that there is something that cancels, and it looks like the cosines cancel. And remember, when you cancel those, you place them with 1s, and it looks like the final answer is what's left. I get sine squared. It looks like I'm getting sine squared x over 1 which is the same thing as sine squared x. And there you go. There's my first problem. And, then, and honestly, this is a basic level problem. And just simple substitutions and cleanups. Uh, I got a little tricky over here changing to multiplication, but not that big of a deal.
All right, so that ends our first problem. I'm going to clear this and start our second problem. All right, now we're going to resume and start our second problem. All right, so I'm going to start with a problem that will be a little bit more complicated, and you'll see why uh, this one is complicated. You'll see it in a moment. Now, some of these problems you're going to have to rely on a, a variety of skills, and sometimes they're not all trigonometry skills. Like the last problem we saw, we had a problem with fractions. Speaking of fractions, this problem is going to have fractions also. All right, so <clears throat> what I'd like to do is replace these things with sines and cosines. So like, for instance, here's secant. That's 1 over cosine. Uh, let's see. It turns out that cosecant is 1 over sine. Okay. And what's this denominator? It looks like this is 1 plus, well, tangent is sine over cosine. Okay, so all we did was some substitution. Nothing tricky, just looking at our formula sheets, our formula lists, and just doing some simple swapping, swapping one value for another. Okay, now, now what we do, here's where it gets a little, mm, little, little hectic. So what I'd like to do is be able to get a common denominator, right? If I'm adding two fractions, I want to get a common denominator. So uh, that means I'm going to multiply this fraction by cosine of x over cosine of x. I'm going to multiply this fraction by sine of x over sine of x. You're thinking, why is he doing this? Because when I multiply, I'm going to get sine cosine here. When I multiply here, I'm going to get sine cosine. And therefore, these two fractions will have a common denominator, and I'll be then able to add them. All right, likewise, take a look over here. I'm trying to add those two fractions. Yep, they are fractions, because I'm going to put this 1 over 1. Now it is a fraction. So if I'm going to add these two, I need a common denominator. This one has cosine. So I'm going to multiply this one by cosine of x over cosine of x. So in doing so, I'm going to get cosine of x over cosine of x. I'll have a common denominator. I'll be able to add those fractions. All right, so I'm kind of doing two parts at the same time. I'm combining the numerator fractions together, and I'm combining the denominator fractions together. All right, so let's do that. So if I multiply this, I'm going to get sine of x um, over sine of x cosine of x. This is going to be cosine of x over sine x cosine of x. When I add these two fractions together, I'm going to get sine of x plus cosine of x all over the common denominator. Okay, so I'm going to get sine of x plus cosine of x all over the common denominator. Sine x, cosine x. Okay, so that takes care of the numerator. I just added those fractions together. All right, unfortunately, I now have a denominator to combine. So here I've got cosine of x over cosine of x plus sine of x over cosine of x. When I add them, I add the numerator, and I keep the same denominator. So I get, uh, let's see, cosine of x plus sine of x all over cosine of x. Okay. All right, so again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this sine x plus cosine of x all over sine x cosine of x. But it's being divided by this. Okay, now I'm going to flip these around because I could add in any order. Cosine of x plus sine of x is the same thing as sine of x plus cosine of x. You can do that. And I, I just want to do that because it'll resemble the other fraction a little bit more. right? I could swap things. I could change the order in which I add. But otherwise, it's the same thing that I wrote down there. All right, so I've got a division problem, which I am now going to change to a multiplication problem. So it's sine x. There's a lot of writing here plus cosine of x all over sine x, cosine of x. But now it's being multiplied by the reciprocal sine 
x plus cosine of x. All right, so I did that flip, and I could start canceling. So it turns out I could cancel a cosine up here with a cosine down there. I can cancel a sine x plus cosine x with a sine x plus cosine x. Okay, so what's going to be left? It looks like the only thing that's left is a sine x in the denominator. Okay, so I got a sine x in the denominator, one's everywhere else, okay? And since that's the reciprocal of sine, right, that's actually, you know, we're flipping sine, that is really the cosecant of x. And there's your final answer. That is the cosecant. So this very complicated looking expression, you did some work, a lot of little detail, but we land up with a very simple expression called cosecant x. All right, so that takes care of our second problem. I'm going to clean this up, start our third problem. All right, so now we're going to pick up with our last problem. Uh, sometimes in, uh, when we're simplifying these trigonometric, uh, trigonometric expressions, the directions might be a little strange. You might see something that says verify, and you're going to be given an equation. You're given 1 minus cosine squared x, and you're going to see it's equal to tan x, cosine x, sine x, which we're all multiplying together over here. All right, when you see something like this, it's the same thing as simplifying trigonometric expressions in that what we have to do to verify that this equation is correct is I have to somehow prove that the left side is equal to the right side. So I could simplify either side or I could even simplify both sides. And if I can eventually get the two to look alike, then I'll have verified this equation and I'll know indeed that the two sides of the equation are in fact equal to each other. And I'll have this uh, expression verified. Okay, so let's move forward. So right off the bat, I could see that um, the left side of this equation is just a adaptation of our first trigonometric identity. It's just sine squared x. So that's pretty simple. I clean up this side immediately. Okay. So uh, let's take a look over here. So I'm going to leave everything in terms of sines and cosines if I can. These are already sines and cosines. So I'm going to replace the tangent with sine x over cosine x. Okay, changing the, all of these into fractions. And yes, they are being multiplied together. If you don't see multiplication sign, well, it means multiplication. Okay, so once we do this little swap, I just swap the tangent, you can see that one of these cosines cancels with this cosine right there. So a numerator and denominator have the same factors. You could cancel factors. All right, so you multiply across. You multiply sine times sine. You get sine squared. Multiply all those ones, I get one. And yep, sine squared of x over 1 is the same as sine squared x. All right, so since the two sides are the same, I have now verified that this indeed is uh, correct, that these two sides are in fact equal to each other. So they're, the two sides are equivalent, so I verified uh, that this is true. Okay, so that's uh, how this works. I just showed a few examples. And, uh, you know, you got to hang with it. When uh, students do these um, problems, when they simplify trigonometric expressions, it is extremely frustrating. And don't get me wrong, it, this is usually very challenging for students because it's foreign. All of these formulas look extremely strange, and, and you're in this other world and trying to clean things up. So we teachers understand it, but you'll get over it after you do enough of these problems. And you got to hang in there and you got to do some homework problems. You just can't get it by seeing these a few times. You got to struggle with it. Okay, make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out all our interactive quizzes uh, and our uh, text lessons and videos. Take care.